Here's how to slow brain aging, help prevent dementia, and even boost your brain function right now. I'm Dr. Austin Perlmutter. This is the Get the Stuck Out podcast, and if you care about your brain health, make sure you're subscribed. Today, we're talking about four powerful ways to help slow the effects of aging on the brain. Now, when most people think about aging, they imagine some sort of a linear progression towards an inevitable end. They think in terms of birthdays, knowing that more candles on the cake equals a higher chance of things like joint pain, lines on the face, even foggy thinking. But the most recent research shows us we have the story all wrong as it relates to longevity, aging, and in particular, brain health. Because the brain changes that we associate with aging like memory loss, are far more dynamic and modifiable through the choices that we make each day than most people realize. So in this video, in this podcast, we're going to be talking about the steps you can take to help slow the rate of brain aging, potentially reverse certain aspects of brain aging, and in general, protect your brain right now. To start with, let's talk about what brain aging actually is. When most people are counting their age and birthdays, they don't really think about the fact that each cell in their body sees those birthdays in a different way. In fact, instead of thinking about things chronologically, research suggests that when we think about aging from a biological perspective and an organ-specific biological aging, then we can think about how each organ in our body ages at a different rate. So again, this is called biological aging as opposed to your age and birthdays, which is chronological aging. Importantly, biological aging predicts our risk for having issues, not only just dying early better than chronological aging, but our risk for having issues with individual organs more than just our age and birthdays. For example, if you have a biologically older liver, that correlates with dramatically higher rates of liver diseases. And specific to this conversation, we're talking about having a biologically older brain. Usually this is measured using things like magnetic resonance imaging and other tests, but having a biologically older brain is strongly list, linked to risk for cognitive impairment, for dementia, and even conditions like multiple sclerosis. There are many specifics, there's a lot of technical aspects to this, but the bottom line is that generally brain aging is measured using imaging, and usually it's looking at things like atrophy, the rate of loss of brain tissue that tends to accompany aging. And I'll just make this point very clear. If you took two 60-year-old people in terms of their age and birthdays and scanned both of their brains, what you might find is that the brain of one of these people was effectively a 70-year-old brain in terms of how much atrophy had happened, whereas the other person may have a 50-year-old brain in terms of the amount of atrophy that's happened. So what we're looking at often is the gap between the expected age of a person based on their age and birthdays and what we actually see on a brain imaging scan in terms of what the biology of their brain looks like. So the meat of this conversation is this question of can we slow or potentially even reverse brain aging? And we can absolutely take steps to positively influence this rate. So yes, we can absolutely take steps to slow brain aging and potentially even reverse certain aspects of brain aging. Research that's just come out in the last couple of years shows that certain lifestyle factors are strongly linked to the speed with which our brains age. There was even a recent diet study that showed adopting a specific food pattern, a healthy food pattern, was linked to a slower rate of brain aging. I'll be clear here, we can't necessarily at this point with modern technology stop our brains from aging, but we can absolutely take steps to fight against more rapid aging and in certain aspects of brain aging, potentially even reverse the process. So the first thing we're gonna talk about, the tool number one is of course, eating the right diet. Every bite of food that you eat is information that programs your brain structure and your brain function. According to a study that just came out in 2025, a lower dietary quality between the time that we are children and the time that we become adults is linked to a higher rate for developing dementia. And we also know that many previous studies show that certain dietary patterns, like the Mediterranean pattern diet or the MIND, M-I-N-D, dietary pattern, could help to reduce risk for dementia. We also know that eating a diet that is of higher quality is linked to a larger brain. So it may help to protect against brain atrophy. But we also have data that just came out recently showing that interventions, specifically interventions around healthy food, could potentially protect against brain aging. So let's talk about one of these studies. This is called the Green Med Study. It's a direct plus study in case you want to Google those things. But this was an 18-month study in about 300 people. This particular 
uh, basically review of this study looking at brain health was published in 2022, but there have been multiple publications from this same data set. And in this variant of it, researchers were looking at people who had consumed a intervention, which was a diet rich in polyphenols. These are nutrients found in plant-based foods. So specifically, they were looking at a Mediterranean diet, which is already high in polyphenols, or a green med plus, meaning that they were adding onto the Mediterranean diet additional polyphenols, so plus additional polyphenols. And what they found is that the people who were eating a Mediterranean diet or this Mediterranean diet plus additional polyphenols had slower rates of brain atrophy than people who were just eating a typical diet. But they found the biggest benefits were in the group that ate the most polyphenols. So we're talking roughly 12 to 1400 additional milligrams of polyphenols a day is what they showed in the study to have this potentially protective effect on brain atrophy. Beyond this, we know that generally eating a diet rich in fiber, healthy fats, fruits, vegetables, polyphenols, and low in things like added sugar, processed meat, and basically anything that's highly processed is a good bet for brain health. And in particular, these are the steps that may help to slow our premature brain aging. And of course, I have to bring up this one additional variable because it is part of diet. As we're talking about brain atrophy and brain aging, it has been shown that people who uh, basically consume excess alcohol uh, have a higher rate of basically atrophy, but also premature brain aging. So if we're looking at a holistic dietary approach to help to slow brain aging, I think that mitigating or minimizing excess alcohol use has to be something that we talk about. Step number two to help to slow and potentially even prevent certain aspects of brain aging are it's going to be exercise. Now, I've spoken about this at length. You can find my other videos and podcasts that are deep dives into what exercise does to brain function. I believe that exercise may be the single most important variable as it relates to lifestyle variables that can help to prevent dementia. We well know that regular exercise is linked to better brain function, boosted brain function. Uh, a recent Lancet publication said the following, quote, regular physical activity, high cardiorespiratory fitness, or a combination of both can mitigate cognitive impairment and reduce dementia risk, end quote. Beyond this, we know that exercise may be able to even reverse aspects of brain aging. And I'm going to say this again because I think it's important to basically very, be very specific about this. Certain aspects of brain aging may be reversible, and exercise may be one way that we can engage in this. In a 2011 study, researchers had people start a regular exercise program, and what they found is that the people who exercised, in this case, it was a walking-based exercise program, they actually grew the size of the hippocampus, the brain's memory center, uh, while people who did not engage in the exercise program showed a shrinkage of that part of the brain. So what they said in this study is that the exercise intervention, quote, effectively reversed age-related volume loss by up to one to two years, end quote. That's a crazy thing to say, basically that you're able to reverse age-related atrophy in the brain. In addition to this, and equally impressive is a study that was published pretty recently showing that 12 months of exercise was effective to lower people's relative brain age. So again, let's just recap this. Exercise may be capable of reversing aspects of brain aging, slowing brain aging, but even reversing brain aging. And that is something everyone needs to be talking about. Certainly there's a lot of nuance, there are a lot of specifics to uncover in this, but I would say the bottom line is at the very least, and I know there are certain people who won't necessarily be able to do this for a number of reasons, but if you're considering whether or not you should exercise, 150 minutes is really the minimum for moderate intensity exercise. And something that I won't talk about in too much detail here, but you can definitely see my other content on this subject, resistance training, two to three days a week of resistance training to boost myokines, to engage your muscles, to build healthy muscles should be a priority for everybody who can manage it. Step number three or tool number three to help to slow brain aging is something I'm incredibly passionate about. You probably know this if you've been following my content, but it relates to the air that we breathe. We talk at length about food and exercise and sleep and all these other variables, but air quality is fundamental to brain health. And one of the most compelling recent areas of brain research is looking specifically at the link between air quality exposures and brain health outcomes. This is not a popular topic on podcasts or in popular health conversations, but it is starting to get more recognition. So an article that just came out in the well-regarded journal Stroke showed that even when people get lower exposure to specific air pollutants called 
PM 2.5, or basically 2.5 micron sized air pollutants, that people who had uh, even lower exposure to these pollutants had more brain atrophy. And these are people who didn't have dementia. These are people with good brain function, suggesting basically that any exposure to air pollutants, specifically PM 2.5s, is a risk factor for brain decline and brain aging. In a recent mouse study, they found that exposure to these PM 2.5s led to brain atrophy. So they found that when they exposed the mice to PM 2.5, they had increased brain atrophy compared to the mice that were not exposed to the PM 2.5s. We're not gonna do that study in humans because it would be inhumane. Importantly, research also suggests that improving air can help to counter some of these effects. In a 2024 study in the journal Environment International, researchers found that when air pollution levels dropped, brain function improved, as did an imaging marker of brain health. So that suggests that if we decrease our amount of air pollution exposure, it can actually improve brain function, and over time, it may even help to slow and potentially even prevent certain aspects of brain aging. Tool number four, there are many tools, and I should just say as a, a quick side note, this will be one of many conversations on brain longevity and on brain health in general as it relates to brain aging. So if you're interested in this type of content, make sure you're following my channel. We're gonna keep doing deep dives on this because I think it's a hugely underreported topic. But topic number four for today is to focus on sleep quality. And you've probably heard me say this before, there is nothing that so consistently and effectively improves brain function for people than getting one night of good sleep. Better sleep is linked to improve focus, cognition, better mental health, and it's also in the aggregate and in longer term data sets linked to a lower risk for a host of brain related diseases. But only recently have we started to see just how much sleep quality correlates with brain aging. And that is very, very recent, actually, in a 2025 paper in eBiomedicine, where researchers were looking at the correlation between people's self-reported sleep quality scores, brain imaging, as well as inflammation. They were actually looking at almost 30,000 people. And what they found is when people reported lower quality sleep, they were found to have higher brain aging, and that inflammation seemed to be key in terms of why the lower quality sleep was linked to more brain aging. The effect of sleep on brain aging is also one of the very quickly modifiable things in terms of how rapidly our brains appear to age when we don't get good sleep and how rapidly they can actually go back to healthy aging when we get good sleep. In a 2023 paper, this was published in the Journal of Neuroscience, they used MRI to look at brain aging after just 24 or so hours of sleep deprivation. What they found is that when people were deprived of sleep, they had an increase in their brain age of one to two years, but then when they got good sleep, when they had that uh, full night of recovery sleep, that brain aging change was reversed. There's a lot of interesting questions as to how this could happen so quickly, but the bottom line is when you do imaging of people who are sleep deprived, their brains look one to two years older, and when you get good sleep, it seems to reverse that. What do you do about this? Well, I've spoken at length about the sleep hygiene practices that you can use to dramatically improve sleep quality, but I also think people need to understand that sleep disorders like obstructive sleep apnea or OSA are incredibly common, often go undiagnosed, and when they get treated can dramatically improve sleep quality. So if you're out there struggling with good sleep, you've done all the basics in terms of getting in bed on time, not having blue light before bed, making sure you have a good sleep wind down routine, I would highly recommend you talk to a health practitioner about a sleep evaluation or just generally about your sleep quality. So these are just four of the ways that we may be able to slow and potentially in certain cases reverse aspects of brain aging. With so many people getting into that older age demographic and with everyone honestly at risk for developing conditions like dementia and other age related brain problems, I think this information is incredibly relevant. If you think this is relevant too, be sure to subscribe to my channel. My name is Dr. Austin Promoter. I'll have lots more content on this. I will include in the comments a link with all the references that I just brought up and I look forward to talking to you again soon.